Hey guys, thank you for joining me today for another oil painting time lapse. This video I started all the way back in September whenever I was commissioned to do this painting. This is by far the largest oil painting that I've been commissioned to do at this point. It is 36 by 48 inches. So I was super eager and excited to get started on this commission piece because I was going to be referencing a photograph from Maho Bay, which is on St. John in the Virgin Islands. It's where I used to live for a period of time and so whenever the girl reached out for me to do this piece, I was really excited because this beach in particular um, is very meaningful to me and it's somewhere I've spent a lot of time and I've done other artwork. And it was kind of just iconic that I was given the opportunity to create a painting of Maho. So I got started on this right away. So right here you can kind of see where I just blocked in the painting. So this is kind of the first step. I just really kind of roughly lay in where the colors are going to be going and the shapes. Um, but I don't spend much time on detail. This all gets covered up in the long run. So after that, I began working on the sky. Now, when I do my oil paintings, I usually do work from the background to the foreground. And then I also usually work from the top of the painting to the bottom of the painting. This doesn't mean that I don't jump around and start working on other areas throughout the process. But that's kind of the general direction that I go in when I am working but after i got this guy to a point where i was happy with it i went ahead and started working on the leaves so i'm basically trying to follow my reference photo as close as possible i'm really not focused too much right now on the very meticulous details that are going to be saved towards the end of the painting such as the fine veining and things like that on the leaves but what i am trying to do is take the overall colors that I see, the highlighted areas, the midtones, and then the shadows of each individual leaf. And then I'm just trying to replicate that here onto the canvas. So you always have your light source kind of coming from one direction. Here in this photo, it's coming basically from directly overhead or right behind these clouds here. I'm gonna have it looking like the sun's peeking behind the clouds. So everything's gonna be pretty lit up and sunny in this piece but I do take that into consideration when I'm painting the leaves and making sure that the colors that are more of that like lime green are gonna be facing inwards towards my light source. And then the areas of the leaves that are more shadowed in are gonna be further away from the light source. So those are some of the things that I'm keeping just like mentally noted um, as I'm working on these leaves and just creating the overall shapes and textures for them. So from there, I start working on the water. Now, water is obviously one of my favorite things to paint. So this part of the painting was very enjoyable for me. Um, I'm really just paying attention to the water in my reference photo. That's really what artwork is. <laughs> you're just looking at your reference photo. You're looking at all of the different shapes and the colors, and then you're just trying to figure out how you can replicate those patterns and textures and colors and shapes and all of those things onto your own artwork. So I'm paying attention really close to my picture here and trying to make sure that my painting is going to align with what I'm seeing. 
So I'm placing the darker areas of water where I see those in my reference photo and along with the lighter areas. And then I'm also paying attention to the different ripples and the movement and the waves and the direction that the water is moving. And I'm just being mindful of all of those things whenever I'm making these little lines in the ocean to make it look like it is fluid, like it has movement to it. After getting the water worked on for a little bit, I moved down to the sand. Now, the sand might not look like a lot, <laughs> but this actually did take a really overwhelmingly large portion of time for this painting. Um, I don't usually add a lot of texture in my artwork, but for this piece, I really wanted it to look as though you were about to walk out into the ocean. So I did want to create some different sand textures on the painting itself. So as you can see here, I'm using this stippling effect and just loading up the paintbrush with different shades of this, you know, tan sand color that I've created. And this also isn't just one color here. I have a darker shade of it for the shadowy parts of the sand. As you can see with that darker color, I've kind of painted on some shapes into the sand to make it look like it's kind of been kicked up and moved around and not just one flat color of a light tan shade. And then I'm using the lightest tan that I mixed up to create the highlighted points on this. So yeah, it's really just a long process of stippling over the entire canvas as well as adding in certain shapes and angles wherever I see that those are needed as well. Um, and then at one point, I got the idea to use some actual sand that I found at my local Michaels store that matched the color of this painting that I was working on. Um, and I felt like it would just kind of enhance the overall piece by adding some actual sand into it. So I used some texturizing medium. I added that to this glittery sand stuff that I had, and then I just um, dab that across the painting as well. Whenever I was finished with all of this, I made sure to use an adhesive spray to spray over the sand, especially to make sure that those little pieces were not going to fall off, especially during shipment, because this did have a rather long distance to travel. I wanted to make sure that the sand wasn't going to fall off of the painting, so I sealed it in with some adhesive spray. and. I feel like that did a pretty good job at making sure that everything was stuck to the canvas rather well. I really do feel like this did a lot as far as making it look more realistic and you know giving off that that whole vibe, that beach vibe that we're all looking for here. So at this point in the painting I was a good I'd say like 50% done. Um, however there was still a lot of small details to add so I went ahead and started mixing up my I think this was the fourth color palette that I actually had for this painting so this was the fourth set of fresh paints that I mixed up for this piece again this was a incredibly large piece so it just took a lot more paint and materials in general to get it all covered up
So here I wanted to go ahead and start touching up the sky a little bit more. There were just some colors that needed a little bit of tweaking and then I just wanted some of the clouds to stand out a little bit more than they were at this point. So I darkened up the shadows beneath them and then I also added more highlights towards the center of this cluster of clouds here to kind of make it seem like the sun was peeking out from right behind all of them. And then after that, I started working on this little projection of island land that is coming out into the painting here. So this is just another little piece of St. John that you see kind of projecting out from Maho Bay. So um, I went in there and I wanted to add a little bit of sand to the bottom of this island because that usually is sitting along there. Um, so I went ahead and used some tape to make sure I could get a straight accurate line. That's a really good way at making sure that you have a clean horizon line always. Yeah, so I just used that. I painted on a little bit more of a highlight onto the area where sand would be on that beach on the other side of the ocean just to kind of help it like lighten up a little bit more. And then I also started adding some highlights to the tops of the bushes or the trees that are here on the landmass. So right here you can kind of see me using this palette knife to kind of like pick at the painting. One of the mop brushes that I was using to kind of softened up some of the blending here started to shed a little bit um, and I didn't want to mess up the painting at the time trying to pull all those out so I waited for the piece to dry this day and then I came back the next day and just removed those hairs. It wasn't too hard to do but that's what this is. Um, and again you can see I'm going back to the leaves. And at this point, I am basically trying to make sure that they resemble all of the leaves in my photograph. So I'm just getting these as close to accurate as I possibly can based off what the photo is giving me. So just spend a little bit more time there doing that. back again and lightened up this little strip of sand on the island back here. Um, the first time I just didn't feel like it was quite vibrant enough so just added a little bit more highlight and then I feel like once I took that off it really helped the island to pop and to look a little bit more sunnier. So at this stage in the painting um, it becomes almost addictive. <laughs> it's definitely my favorite part in the process where you're just adding all of these small little details that really make the painting come to life and feel more like a realistic style of art. And as you can see up close here I'm just adding on more details to really every square inch of this painting that I see it needs. So whether that be just a change in the color or the shapes of something, or it just needs a little bit more detailing to make these things look more realistic, then that's what I go ahead and do from this point forward in the painting. So I was really nervous at this point to mess up any of the sand that I'd already spent an enormous amount of time on, but I had to go in and add the shadows from the leaves that we have kind of protruding out of the side of the canvas here. So that's what I'm doing here. I take this dark 
gray that I mixed up. It's not quite black, but it is a very dark gray. And I start painting in just some little shapes and sporadic like patterns on the sand here to create the shadows from the leaves right above. So then I just work on detailing up my sea foam, the wet sand, and you know, just that little rush of water that's kind of washing up onto shore here. It's usually pretty calm down in the Caribbean islands. Um, at most of the beaches, you don't really get a ton of waves. You do at certain times of the year. But for the most part, it's very serene, very beautiful, flat, and, and just chill. So I didn't want to make any crazy waves or anything in this water. Again, I'm really just following the reference that I have on hand. So doing what I can here for the water. And then finally, the last thing that I was asked to do for this commission piece was to add some yellow orange and red hibiscus flowers into the trees now these trees themselves down at maho don't actually grow these flowers at least not the ones that are right on the shore here um so this was not in the photo this was kind of just something i did from memory and added some of these beautiful flowers into the leaves and I thought this was a really good touch overall. It definitely helped to add another dimension of color to the piece. It wasn't just a lot of cool colors at this point. I was able to add some warm like yellows and orange and reds obviously, so I felt like it gave it some really good contrast, you know, and just an extra little pop of color there in the painting. And it really did do a lot to bring this piece to a finish and help kind of tie it all together. So I love how these little hibiscus flowers turned out. Yeah, all in all, this piece took me about five months collectively to finish, so even though you guys are seeing it in a quick 20 minute little video all sped up, this was many, many days of my life, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this piece as much as I enjoyed creating it. So thank you so much for being here with me today, spending your time with me, and I hope I will catch you in another video. Bye!